Hey. Hey. Hazel. You won't believe it. I heard your wedding anniversary is on the 30th of this month. Is that legit? Hey there, Addison. Yep, that's true. Anything odd about that? No way. You're not gonna believe this. Ours is on the 30th too. I was so blown away by this coincidence that I just had to shoot you a message. Isn't that crazy? Out of all 365 days in a year, her anniversaries are on the same day. Wow. Seriously? That's quite a coincidence. Do you guys go out to celebrate too? My husband isn't the romantic type. I mean, a cake would be nice, but he comes home with nothing. So I try to whip up a special dinner for our anniversary. Last year, I even made homemade roast beef. And guess what? He did come home because he said he was having dinner with a colleague at work. I was so ticked off. Oh no! Your hubby's got some nerve. You're incredible for making homemade roast beef. I'm not much of a chef, so we always hit the town to celebrate. Although it's been a challenge finding kid-friendly places since our little one came along. Dining out, huh? I gotta say, I'm kinda jealous. Are you talking about that fancy joint that's cool with kids and has its main branch in Hawaii? Absolutely! Getting a table there is like a mission. So I booked a year in advance for our anniversary this year. Pretty wild, right? A spot with its main branch in Hawaii, but they dish up authentic Japanese cuisine. Hold up. Seriously? That's a Michelin two-star restaurant. I've heard it takes a year to score a reservation, and the food costs a fortune, right? Man, you guys are living the high life. Oh, <laughs> it's not like that. My hubby's just a hopeless romantic, so our anniversary is always at some swanky place. Birthdays, anniversaries... We tend to eat out. Uh, must be nice. Are you rubbing it in? It's kind of a downer seeing this disparity when our kiddos are in the same kindergarten. It makes me feel silly for fuzzing over roast beef. Don't put yourself down like that. It's not true. I'm sure your hubby appreciates your heartwarming home-cooked meals. Yeah, maybe. But it can't beat that restaurant, can it? Could you give them a ring and squeeze us into your reservation? If it's that place, I bet my husband would beeline at home. They can increase the headcount on a reservation, right? Uh, I'm really sorry, Addison, but that's kind of a tall order. It was tough enough securing a spot for me, my husband and our son, let alone dawdling that. Seriously? Then why even bring this up? Just wanted to gloat while I'm having a low-key anniversary. You're gonna feast at that fancy place, huh? I didn't know you had it in you. Our boys seem to click, but I might have to keep an eye on how much they hang out from now on. That's not fair on the kids, is it? Besides, you brought up the restaurant first. I wasn't trying to gloat or anything. 
Also, I think a home cooked anniversary dinner is pretty special too. That's pretty high handed of you to say. You should try walking in my shoes. Fine, just go on. If you're gonna ridicule me like this, I've got some ideas up my sleeve too. A few days later. Hey, Hazel. Your wedding anniversary dinner reservation at the Volcano Lounge is set for 7pm, right? Yes, but why do you ask? Oh, I called the restaurant just to check. Found your family's reservation spot on. Wait, that can't be. You're talking about the Volcano Lounge near the station, right? Trying to pull a fast one on me, huh? I wasn't lying when I told you I had my own plans. I'm not about to let you be the only one with the same anniversary, same gendered, same age child as mine, enjoying a lavish celebration. So you better brace yourself. Brace myself? For what? Please, don't do anything crazy. Wait, you've read my message but not replied. Anyway, please don't get any weird ideas, okay? On the wedding anniversary day... Hey Hazel, today's the big day, our wedding anniversary. We had a child-free period, so it's our sixth anniversary. What's up, Addison? Quite a surprise you messaging me out of the blue. We became parents right after getting hitched, so it's our fourth anniversary. Six years in. You'd want to go all out, right? So, drumroll please. Guess where this is? Uh, where is that? The interior is really grand, but I'm drawing a blank here. You mean you don't recognize your own dinner spot? This is the inside of the Volcano Lounge. Once I learned about your 7pm booking, I managed to get mine bumped up to 6pm. Beat you to it. It's your anniversary today, right? You're supposed to go to some fancy place. Right. But alas, you've already dined. So you'll have to foot the bill. Brace yourself. I can't because we're in Hawaii. Wait. Didn't I tell you that the main branch of the Volcano Lounge is in Hawaii? I booked my table there a year ago. Besides, who on earth did you just swindle? Are you alone? Where's your son? We're here as a family for our anniversary. Told my husband, a high rolling mom friend is treating us for our anniversary. And my son is thrilled with a delicious meal. When I told them it was reserved under Gibson, they didn't bat an eye. That's your last name, right? Well, it's a common last name. You probably crashed some other Gibson's reservation. What a coincidence. Even the headcount matched. Addison, what's your next move? The real Gibsons will probably show up for their 7pm reservation. What's your game plan for then? Unlike me, they're total strangers to you. Oh no. I didn't think this could happen. I'm definitely gonna get scolded. Should I bail out and make a run for it? Oh, but I plan to stick you with a bill, so I didn't bring my wallet. They do accept digital payments here. Could you wire some money to my phone? Um, I don't see why I should. Why would I pay for the meal of someone who was planning to hijack my reservation? Plus, 
You clearly have no regard for someone who made the reservation a year in advance. That Gibson must have been eagerly awaiting their meal at the Volcano Lounge. You just ran them out without the slightest bit of guilt. I do feel guilty. I'm drowning in guilt. So please, just send me the money. If the real Gibson show up, if I spill the beans to my husband, he'll blow a fuse. And the last thing I want is someone chewing me out. I just... I just want to celebrate my wedding anniversary in a posh restaurant. That's all I ever wanted. Look, Addison, you're trying to make yourself out to be the victim here. But let's face it, you're the one causing all the trouble. You took over someone else's reservation without a second thought. It's hard not to question your ethics. And then... On top of that, you expect me to foot your bill? That's kind of messed up, don't you think? But you know what? It doesn't involve me anymore. We're just going to enjoy our dinner in Hawaii. So please, no more messages. Oh, and one more thing. Now that I see your true colors, I'm gonna ask my kid to steer clear of yours, okay? What? Weren't you the one who said the kid shouldn't be involved? Uh, never mind about that. I still need to figure out. What about the money? My husband might have his credit card on him, but if I spill the beans, he'll blow his top. Sorry, but that's your mess to clean up. I'm going to block you now, so don't bother trying to reach out. Wait! Just hang on a sec. What? She really went ahead and blocked me. And my messages were still unread. All I wanted to have is a fancy wedding anniversary celebration. How did things end up like this? In the end, Addison found herself at a dead end. And it seems she eventually came clean to her husband. He, having a level-headed outlook, gave her a well-deserved earful and settled the bill with his credit card, apologizing deeply to the real Gibsons. It's hard to say how the Gibsons reacted, but Addison has since started working part-time. She's probably hustling to cover some outstanding expenses. Even during the daycare pickups and drop-offs, she's become remarkably subdued and seems to be doing some serious soul-searching. Talk about a mom friend who ended up being a real handful. Hey, can we chat for a bit? Sure, what's up? I wanted to talk about our girls' exams. Oh yeah, they're coming up soon, right? Yeah, we've decided to hire a tutor for Heather. Wow, that's commitment. A tutor on top of a cram school, huh? You bet. Cram school alone just isn't cutting it. Really? Heather seemed to be doing alright. Don't you think pushing her that hard might backfire? My girl needs a little push to bring out her best. Her recent test results made that pretty clear. I can't have her losing to your Angie at this stage. I think Angie's high score in the last test was just a stroke of luck. It had a lot of her strong points. Even so, Heather's grades were pretty bad. Her teacher said she won't make it into her first choice girl school at this rate. That's why I've got a tutor and she's studying every single day. Are you giving her any time to relax? With only two months left for the exams? She'll relax once they're over. You know, even adults would struggle to work for two months straight without a break. Now is not the time for such talk. Why can't you understand that, as a parent with a child facing the same exams? I thought I'd find empathy in you, Tammy. 
But this conversation seems pointless. I'm sorry, but it would be too late if Heather's health suffers. So, please, moderate her studies. Like I said, we can't afford to think like that now. You always side with the kids. But you want a tutor for Angie too, right? You're just pretending because you can't afford it. Am I wrong? Money isn't really the factor here. Yes, she goes to cram school. But more than extra studying, I want her to face the exams with her best physical and mental health. Playtime is important too. Sure, sure. Thanks for the sage advice. If you keep up that attitude, you'll only set yourself up for failure. Now, I need to pick up my kid from preschool and prepare for the tutor later. We'll talk later. A week later... Tammy, does your husband always go to the park in sweats and a down jacket? Did he get spotted? I saw a man playing with Angie in the park. I was just about to call the police. I always tell him to be more mindful, but he seems okay without outfit for a quick trip to the park or the store. Sorry if it upset you. I don't care how your husband dresses, but why is he wandering around in the middle of a weekday like that? He's taking a break from work. He says it's just a quick 30-minute outing. It didn't seem like he was between work shifts, though. I mean, he was in sweats. What kind of work does he do? My husband works remotely, so his dress code is pretty relaxed. Doesn't he have meetings even working remotely? When he has meetings, he does change his stop, but the sweat stays on. You know, Tammy, you can be honest with me. Your husband's unemployed, isn't he? What? Isn't he unemployed? Then, are you a breadwinner? You didn't seem to be working. Are you working night shifts? Um, I don't. Then, how are you managing daily expenses? We're just doing fine, since my husband is working. That can't be. How are you affording Angie's cram school? Like I said, it's covered by my husband's income. You don't need to lie. I can't imagine a man working in such a shabby outfit. But that's the truth. Are you living on handouts from your parents? We're not doing anything of that sort. If you continue to insult my husband, I'll lose my temper. Okay, okay. You're quite scary when you're angry. I'll back off today, but I'll text you again. Please don't if it's about the same thing. A week later... Tammy, you seem pretty chill considering your kid's in the thick of exam prep. What do you mean? I saw you at that condo open house last Sunday. You just happened to see me there? Actually, our family's thinking about buying a high-rise condo too. So I thought I'd check it out. And there you were with Angie. Oh, really? So you're looking to buy a condo too? Absolutely. If the right one comes along... I'll snap it up. Wow, you must be doing pretty well. Well, a high-rise condo is a rich person's plaything, right? I'm totally set on getting one. Gotcha. But don't you think it's a bit off for you to go to open houses? If you're just looking around with no intention to buy, why bother? Just looking around. Well, your husband isn't working, right? Buying a high-rise condo seems utterly out of reach. Where do you think you'll get the money? 
So, you're back to calling my husband a deadbeat. I warned you last time not to go there. Oh, right. It's even worse than being jobless, isn't it? Sponging off your folks at this age? I told you we're not doing that. Why is it that you only say rude things? If you'll excuse me, I'm going to stop texting you now. Struck a nerve, did I? <laughs> Three weeks later. Tammy, I'd appreciate if you quit loitering around my high-rise condo just because you fancy it. A high-rise is a pipe dream for an unemployed family like yours. Can you stop skulking around if you can't afford it? Lynn, what were you doing in front of my condo? What? What do you mean in front of your condo? Wait, you're telling me you bought a high-rise while jobless? There's no way you'd get a loan. What on earth are you talking about? Could you stop with the jobless talk? My husband is a bona fide CEO. This high-rise condo is ours. Wait, CEO? Of what? A real estate company. The company my husband runs own this high-rise, and we live on the top floor. Hold on. That's too much of a leap for me to follow. So, where should I start from? The part where your husband is a CEO. He's not unemployed, is he? As I've told you before, my husband works remotely most days and only goes into the office a couple of days a week. In his sweats? No, to toot my husband's horn for a bit. What's there to brag about? Well, he's seriously good looking. When he puts on a suit and styles his hair, he's a total knockout compared to his casual at home look. I find that hard to believe. I figured you wouldn't, so I'll send you a special treat. A picture of my husband in his suit. Enjoy. He's actually hot. What was with the shaggy-haired sweatpants look then? Well, I love him either way. Enough with the mushy stuff. Don't you want to hear how we met? It was back in middle school and... Stop! I really don't care. I'm interested in your money in the high-rise condo. Your love story isn't going to benefit me. Really? It's a good story, though. So, I get your husband is the CEO of a real estate company. If he owns a high-rise, he must be raking it in, right? What's his annual income? Talking about the annual income, huh? That's a tad... tricky. Hmm. So even being a CEO, your husband isn't rolling in it. For instance, my hubby brings in $150,000 a year. Think he'll be taken aback if I spill the beans? Doubt it. Well, my husband's annual income is a cool $3 million. No way! Straight up. Ah, that makes sense then. How you can't afford the swanky penthouse? You're catching on? We've got everything we need. Angie's tutoring fees, her school costs since primary, the mortgage on her high-rise pad, and all our day-to-day -day expenses. We're far from strapped for cash. If I had to gripe about something, I would have preferred to have bought the condo outright. But even for us, getting the whole floor on the 40th was a stretch without a loan. You snagged the whole floor on the 40th? Yup. Didn't you know? Had no clue. So, which floor did you go for? You were bragging about your condo after all. The fifth floor. Wait. What was that again? 
I said the fifth floor. Got an issue with that? These condo prices are sky high. Our budget only stretched to the fifth floor. Oh, I get it. As long as you're a homeowner, right? But listen, ease up on the wealth flaunting. If you keep it up, I let our mom squad know what floor you're really on. I bet you just told them you snagged a condo, but left out the floor number. Please don't. Then, promise you'll quit the showing off. Alright, I promise. I'll stop completely. Happy now? Absolutely. Just make sure you don't meddle with our exam preps. Understood. Had no idea you had this fierce side. Their daughter's exam day arrived in no time. Lynn's daughter, Heather, didn't make the cut, while Tammy's daughter, Angie, passed with flying colors. Heather's downfall probably lay in the excessive pressure and lack of downtime. Now, Lynn's kicking herself for her strategy. Running into the Tammy family in the same high-rise is quite the awkward encounter. But she can't just ditch the condo she's got a 35-year mortgage on. So she's stuck living in a constant state of unease. Lynn, who used to blow off steam by outdoing Tammy, now finds herself increasingly stressed with no outlet. On the flip side, the Tammy clan is throwing a bash to celebrate Angie's acceptance into her top choice of school. The entire family is pumped for the new chapter starting this fall. Thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that like button. It's much appreciated.